So the risk of viral shedding or prolonged uh, COVID-19 in immunocompromised patients is something that uh, we get called on uh, 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 more recently. And there is evidence that immunocompromised patients do shed longer uh, if you look at um, uh, culture versus subgenomic RNA versus genomic RNA. Uh, there's definitely increased uh, viral shedding in patients that are immunocompromised, going from the 11 days to about 18 to 21 days. Um, and in some situations, we've seen even up to four weeks, depending on the type of immunocompromising situations in terms of viral shedding. Uh, vaccination does significantly shorten viral shedding, uh, but uh, and uh, unfortunately, COVID-19 treatment does not seem to affect the duration of virus shedding. Um, the, the issues that really come up for patients, particular immunocompromised patients, is um, you know, what this means for their therapies, uh, for their cancer chemotherapy, um, their transplant immunosuppressive therapy, and how long to hold uh, those therapies if a patient continues to shed. Uh, and this is a question that is not fully answered by the data and I think really um, needs to be a conversation with uh, the oncology and transplant providers in terms of the risk benefit uh, for the patient. Of course, if the patient is symptomatic, it's a different calculation than if this is asymptomatic uh, viral shedding. So this is the data that I was referring to, uh, talking about the clearance uh, of uh, SARS-CoV-2 in immunocompromised patients. So a median of four weeks of viable virus shedding, a median of five weeks of subgenomic RNA shedding, um, and uh, in terms of genomic RNA, the, the, the median time wasn't reached. But this really compares to about 11 days in the non-immunocompromised individuals. So there's definitely uh, prolonged viral shedding in these patients. So the treatment options for prolonged symptomatic uh, COVID-19 uh, that there, there are several options. These aren't well studied, but uh, certainly things that we've used is longer or repeat doses, uh, courses of nermotrelvir, longer additional courses of remdesivir, um, and high titer convalescent plasma from a vaccinated donor. These are all possibilities when you're consulted on patients that have symptomatic prolonged shedding. So. The, this is what are the implications of prolonged shedding in terms of prevention and patient management? Because, you know, obviously it's interesting to see the data. It's always important to remind ourselves that these data sets are really small. In fact, if you look at the CDC recommendations for things like quarantine and isolation, um, a lot of it is based on really small data sets and looking at actually infectious virus. Um, but I don't think there's any doubt that this is an ongoing issue. And, um, there are implications of prolonged viral shedding in terms of, you know, things like prevention and patient management. Uh, I, I'll just make a couple comments and then, Roger, I'd like to hear your thoughts. But from a prevention side, I think we just need to be really candid with people that they're going to need to isolate probably longer um, than other people. Um, and, and that's certainly consistent with the CDC guidelines that instead of, you know, really possible shedding for 10 days, maybe up to 20 and maybe even Longer, and then and then Rochelle, have you comment on the, this? You made a real, you were really careful in the way you distinct distinguished between prolonged shedding and symptomatic shedding. Yeah. Yeah. So symptomatic shedding is a whole different animal, uh, right? Yes, and 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 it's not, it doesn't square well with uh, with 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 uh, uh, shedding and symptoms don't match in a lot of. Uh, uh, long-term uh, follow-up studies. Uh, for instance, we've all heard about virologic rebound in people who got treated, uh, and again, it's not specific to a specific antiviral, uh, but some people have re recurrence of uh, viral shedding even after it was uh, interrupted. And there's also a number of people who have recurrence of symptoms after the symptoms have gone away. And those two groups of people are not necessarily the same. <laughs> and, and so it's important to also consider that prolonged viral shedding in people who are immunosuppressed is also giving the virus the opportunity to evolve, even within the same individual. So that's how we, develop, we, we get uh, uh, viruses that have 
uh, more uh, resistance to, to, to treatments and, and, and preventions because these people are a macrocosm, the immunocompromised people, a macrocosm within which the virus can stay for a long time and have the chance to evolve. And it might merge a very different virus than the one that we need. Yeah, and, and in fact, that's yeah. been that's been shown in serial. Yeah. You know that yeah. that you see within a patient who sheds for a long time the evolution of the virus within that patient. Right. Early on, people thought this virus we won't see a lot of evolution. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. It's a short-lived replication phase, and that'll be the end of it. Obviously, not the case. And probably a lot of that is driven by infection and immunosuppressed patients. Mm -hmm. And and I think you know you mentioned the guidelines not too long ago added some thought to these unique patients who are truly symptomatic and you have evidence of continued ongoing infection. Now, how you define that is difficult. In a hospitalized patient, you know, often people will look to RT-PCR, to, uh, to PCR assays where you can look at cycle threshold. And the suggestion that if it remains low, suggesting high titers, and they have symptoms, that you might act on it in a symptomatic patient. Uh, otherwise, the role of continuing to monitor things like PCR, nasopharyngeal PCR, is probably pretty limited. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Agreed. And, and has, for patients with immunocompromise, I think significant implications for their overall care. Yeah. Um, and so unless they're symptomatic, we generally you know, ask folks not to recheck. Yeah.